Hello there, hello there, welcome to CXC Math TV. Today we will be looking at probability. Nice. So the first question to ask is of course what is probability? What is this probability? Now the word probability means possibility. Yes, the words probability means possibility. So probability is just the possibility of some random event occurring. For example, what is the probability Sasha will buy Dwayne ice cream today? Right? So there might be a 0% chance Sasha will buy him ice cream or maybe a 10% chance or maybe a 100% chance. Maybe she promised that she's going to buy Dwayne ice cream. So the first key thing about probability is that the probability of an event it is going to be a number between 0 and 1. That's in decimal, of course, but as a percentage, you can say from 0 to 100%. So now, why do I need to learn probability? Well, we need to know probability because uncertainty affects us in all aspects of life. Uncertainty affects us in genetics. For example, when a child is being born, we don't know whether the baby is going to be a girl or a boy. But biologists who do who specialize in these topics, who study chromosomes, they're going to need to have some level of understanding in order to make their predictions and their assumptions. Now, if you're into sports and if you're gambling or you're betting on maybe horse racing, cricket or track and field, you have to use a little bit of probability right and for those who are into politics you have to study voting patterns and trends if you're running for a seat in office now those are just a few reasons there are many many more reasons of why we need to know probability now in trying to understand uncertainty we will be examining the laws of probability now before we talk about the laws of probability we're going to first look at the empirical approach to probability so now the first thing we want to do is look at this experiment right here we're going to toss a coin 5,000 times and record how many times you get hit now just to be clear i actually did this experiment and these are the results of the experiment i did now don't call me crazy it's just fun now try it just take out a coin and flip it just flip it and flip it 5,000 times and record the amount of times you get hit now after tossing the coin 50 times i had recorded 26 heads and so that's a relative frequency of 0.52 now after 100 tosses i got 48 heads and that's a relative frequency of 0 0.48 after 250 tosses i got 122 heads that's a relative frequency of 0 0.488 and continuing and continuing at the end of 5000 tosses i got 2471 heads and that works out to be 0 0.4942 as the relative frequency so having done this experiment I can say that a probability of getting ahead after tossing a coin 5,000 times is roughly 0 0.50. Now, this is known as an empirical approach to probability. This is an empirical approach. We actually conducted an experiment to get the likelihood of an event occurring. Now, in real life, you're not always going to do that. The next way now is the classical approach to probability. Now, if you were asked the probability of obtaining a head when a fair die is tossed, without thinking, you'd say a half, right? Intuitively, you'd apply that definition saying that there's an equally likely outcome of getting either a head or a tail. And probability is just the number of successful outcomes over the number of possible outcomes. So when tossing a coin, there are two possible outcomes. You can either get a head or you can either get a tail. 
now if you're going to get ahead that's one possible successful outcome out of two options head or tail so that's a half in the same way or when we did the empirical approach it gave us a half roughly so now before we can actually start looking at classical approach to probability there are some definitions that we need to know yes some definitions the first definition we need to know is what is a sample space what is a sample space now the sample space is a set of all possible outcomes this is a sample space and the sample space is usually denoted by the letter s now each outcome of the sample space is called a sample point next is an experiment an experiment or a trial is any process that is repeated and generates a set of results or observation examples of experiments are recording a test grade or measuring daily rainfall interviewing a household to obtain his or her opinion on gambling or tossing a coin or maybe you want to say rolling a die all of those stuff are just experiments because they can generate a set of results for example let's measure the daily rainfall to see how much rain is going to fall between monday to wednesday or let's gamble to see who is going to win the most or let's toss a coin to see how many times we can get head if we toss the coin five thousand times those are experiments and they give you results that you can observe now an event an event is the outcome that is observed on a single repetition of an experiment so after a single repetition of an experiment has been conducted now that outcome of just that single repetition of the experiment is known as a event nice so now we're going to go more deeper into these definitions to go specifically branched off into each one let's start with the sample space now the sample space we said is the set of all possible outcomes now let's have a look at this if you toss a coin there are two possible outcomes head or tail so in set notation you write s is equal to open set h comma t now h represents head t represents tail all right let's say you throw a die now s would be one two three four five six because a die has six possible results one through to number six now let's have a look at something else what if you were supposed to toss a coin and roll a dice now we know that a coin can give us two options head or tail and we know that a dice can give us one through to number six so now how many outcomes will there be now in order to generate how many outcomes there will be you have to multiply the number of outcome from the coin times the number of outcomes on the dice two times six is twelve because you can get a head and a one a head and a two a head and a three a head and a four a head and a five a head and a six or you can get a tail and a one a tail and a two a tail and a three a tail and a four a tail and a five or a tail and a six so there are 12 possible outcomes now what you see below is the sample space diagram which just shows you when we put all of it together as one thing in the form of a diagram it's really beautiful we'll get more into sample space diagram when we're looking at some exam style questions if the sample space s consists of a finite number of equally likely outcome then the probability of an event e is written as p open bracket e close bracket and is defined as the probability of an event is equal to the number of likely times the event will happen divided by the number of sample points this is the formula for calculating probability so the probability of any event is equal to the number of times the event the event is going to successfully happen divided by the number of sample points so let's have a look at these two examples here two unbiased dice are tossed what is the probability of a score of seven and number two a group of 20 university students contains nine males and 11 females who are doing stats 1001 a student is picked at random to represent the group find the probability the student is a male 
So let's start with question one. So two unbiased dice are tossed. What is the probability of a score of seven? Now we know that the probability of getting a score of seven is the number of times the score of the two dice adds up to seven divided by the number of sample points. Now, if you're to list out all the sample points on a dice, you can get one and a one, one and a two, one and a three, one and a four, one and a five, one and a six. Those were all the options of getting the first number, the first die to get a one and the other dice to get the other numbers. Now, what if the first die we got a two? So it could be two and a one, two and a two, two and a three, two and a four, two and a five, two and a six. And we continue and we're going to realize that if we list out all of the options, we're going to get 36 possibilities. So the number of sample points is going to be 36. Now what you could have done is say that the number of sample points is just 6 options on the first die times 6 options on the second die. 6 times 6 is 36. Now we want the probability of the score on the two dice adding up to seven now you can get a one on the first die and the six on the second die that adds up to seven or you can get two on the first die and a five on the second or you can get a three on the first die and a four on the second or you can get a four on the first die and a three on the second or you can get a five on the fir first die and a two on the second or you can get a six on the first die and a one on the second so what we realize that is that the number of times the score can add up to 7 is 6 ways. So the probability of the score being equal to 7 is equal to 6 divided by the number of sample points 36. That works out to be 1 over 6. That's applying the definition of probability. Now let's look at what if they had asked it this way. What if the question had asked you to find the probability that the score is greater than 7. Hmm, think about it. Pause and attempt that one. Now, as you would have paused and attempted that one, the probability the score is greater than 7 is the number of times the score is greater than 7 divided by the number of sample points. Now, we already know the number of sample points is 36. Now, how many times can the score be greater than 7? Well, it can get a 2 and a 6. It, that would add up to 8. You can get a 3 and a 5. That would be 8. You can get a 3 and a 6. That would be 9. You can get a 4 and a 4. That would be 8. You can get a 4 and a 5. That would be 9. And continuing and searching through those 36, we highlight them in black. There are 15 ways that we can get the score to be greater than 7. And so the probability of the score being greater than 7 is 15 out of 36. 5, 15 out of 36 simplifies to be 5 out of 12. So we realize that there is a 41.7% chance that you can get your score to be greater than 7. That's not pretty bad. Nice. Now let's look at the next example there. Now a group of 20 university students contains 9 male and 11 female who are doing statistics 1001. And a student is picked at random to represent the group. Find the probability that the student is a male. Now the probability the student is a male is the number of male students in statistics 1001 divided by the number of sample points. Now there are of course 9 male students out of 20 students in the classroom. So the probability of randomly picking a male is 9 out of 20. So there's a 45% chance of picking a male. So now go ahead and attempt the following questions. It says John Mark has 8 red, 7 green, 5 blue and 6 grey markers in his bag. What is the probability that he picks out a green marker? And number 2 says Marcus has 3 coins. What is the probability Marcus flips all three coins simultaneously and gets at least two heads? So go ahead, pause the video and attempt. Now let's look at the first one. So we want the probability that John Mark picks out a green marker. So we know that is the number of green markers divided by the number of sample points. 
Now, the number of sample points is the total markers. So we add up all the markers, 8 red plus the 7 green plus the 5 blue plus the 6 gray. That adds up to be 26 markers. And the number of green markers, which is our event, is equal to 7. So the probability of John Mark pricking a green marker is equal to 7 divided by 26. So that's the probability of John Mark getting a green marker. Now let's have a look at question 2. Question 2 says Marcus has 3 coins. What is the probability that Marcus flips all 3 simultaneously and gets at least 2 heads? Now the probability of Marcus getting at least 2 heads is the number of times that Marcus can get 2 head or more. Now let's look at, let's list out all the possibilities. So listing out all the possibilities, Marcus can either get a head, a head, and a head on all three tosses, or he can get a head on two coins and a tail on the third one, or Marcus can get a head on the first one, a tail on the second one, and a head on the third one. And continuing, we realize that there are going to be eight options. Now you just list out all of them, right? List out all of them and you can see there are eight possibilities as displayed on the screen. Now let's look at how many times that Marcus can get at least two heads. Now head, 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 that's three head that have at least two head. Now head, head, tail, that would have two heads there, which is good. Head, tail, head, that would have two heads. And tail, head, head, that would also have two heads. So there are four ways that we can get two or more heads. So the probability of getting at least two heads is 4 divided by 8, which works out to be a half, which is 50%. Nice. So we can conclude that the probability of getting at least two heads is 50%. Alright, so that concludes the basic or the introduction to probability. Nice. So we just need to remember that probability is a possibility of a random event occurring. And the probability of an event is a number between 0 and 1. If the probability of an event is 0, that means the event cannot occur. If the probability of an event occurring is 1, that means the event is definitely occurring. Alright, and once you remember this, you'll be fine. So you must remember the definition of probability. Alright, so that's it. That's it for today. Stay tuned for more as we will continue probability and look at some more wonderful aspects of this beautiful topic. Alright, so make sure to take care and have a blessed day. See you soon.